Hello guys, have you missed me? It has been a while. I wonder if you guys can tell like my wake up morning voice. <laughs> I feel like my voice is a little bit deeper in the morning um, when I first wake up. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I think we have crossed over the threshold into season three. I think that's why it was such a long pause um, in between season two and now because that season is ending and now we're stepping into season three. Um, and so I'm so excited. So much has happened in such a short amount of time. Um, all glory and honor goes to God. And so I was up this morning and I was making some coffee and Sometimes the simple revelations come through like your daily routine of things, right? So I was making coffee, it's instant coffee. And um, I was, I put the creamer in there and then I was like, I have cinnamon and I like cinnamon and coffee. Mind you, this whole time the jar is almost finished. I haven't put cinnamon in that one of these coffees that I've made for myself. And so once I put the cinnamon in it with the creamer, Man, listen, it just changed the entire taste of the coffee. And then I was like, wow, one small change, you know what I'm saying, made the difference. And then I started thinking about this conversation that I had with a friend from college who I haven't spoken to in years. Do you hear me? Um, and it was a catch up. And what was sticking out to me was not having relationship with Christ then, not understanding how he speaks to us and you know what he has for us and destiny and plans and things like that and how the enemy tries to stop them right that's all he can't do nothing else all right it's like he ain't got nothing else to do but to steal kill and destroy right and so even in him trying to stop the plans that god has orchestrated for you it won't work because once again that romans 8 all things work together for those who are called, notice that in there is called, and who love God. Um, I said that out of order, but who are called, who love God and are called according to his purpose, because it's according to his purpose that all things work out. You know what I'm saying? It's not like for, for you, uh, that didn't sound right. <laughs> So you know what I'm trying to say? It's like, it's not like you're the one orchestrating, there we go, your purpose. <laughs> he has orchestrated your purpose because he has predestinated it before time. Okay, there we go. I was like, oh Lord, help me redeem that because that did not come out right. And as soon as I said, I was like, that's not, that's, don't take that wrong. Um, because he knew you right before you were formed in your mother womb. It's not like, I know I've said this before in, in that glory episode. It's not like you decided that you was going to be born to such and such family on this day, on this year. You know, there's no way that's not possible. And you was going to say that I'm going to be born with such X, Y, Z talents and I'm going to do, 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 do. No, that's not how it happens. What you do is you seek God for the purpose and destiny that he birthed inside, that he placed inside of you to be birthed here on this earth. And so in order to do that, you have to know him and to spend time with him and to seek him and to get those downloads from heaven um, for what he wants you to do. All right, so let me backtrack because I went a little hit of where I was going with the whole college thing. So I was in the bathroom um, putting some oil in my hair and my scalp. Once again, right, doing stuff you just normally do. And this is what happens when you just, you know, sit and think sometimes. And, you know, and... I was reflecting on the conversation that we had last night. <clears throat> you know, and we were sharing, you know, testimonies and things like that. Um, of being still here. Because some people, you know, have not made it. Um, just to put it like that. And I mean, like, mentally, right? There is a mental strength and physical strength that comes with enduring life. <laughs> and... If you don't have a support system, it just makes it that, you know, much harder. Um, I felt like that was going in. Okay. So college came up because that's where we met in college. Um, and, um, oh yeah, shout out to you. You made it to the podcast, girl. Uh, if you don't know, now you know. <laughs> 
once you're a part of my life, ah, it's free game. Um, <clears throat> so I'm not going to mention her name, but we were talking and once again, I'm in the bathroom oiling my scalp and I was thinking about college and, um, just about how the enemy tries to stop me from walking in what God had called me to do, right? And particularly in mental health, in the mental health field. And then I was also thinking about the mentorship and the teaching on church hurt. And that's kind of how this all like pieced together. And you will see in just a moment when I break it down finally. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I went to school for counseling. I was kind of a little bit all over the place <laughs> um, as a freshman in college. Um, growing up, I actually wanted to own a restaurant. Okay, I wanted to be a chef. I thought I was going to do that. I was going to go to culinary school. But hmm, fear stopped me from going to culinary school because of my eating habits. Okay, I don't eat everything. And I learned to cook without tasting the food. <laughs> Huh. Yes, that is a thing. I learned to cook without tasting the food personally. And it's just, you know, that's once again, the gift and grace of my life. Um, and as I, you know, matured in my cooking and things like that, I obviously would taste stuff that I would serve to other people. But anyway, um, I went to, I ended up going for counseling, pursuing that for a degree, a bachelor's in counseling. And mind you, same friend, right? actually help me if she actually hears this episode i did my um oh man wow it was on a cd i don't know if she remembers it we sat in my apartment in um dang what was it called on sixth street that that apartment uh six six yeah sixth street in huntington west virginia um and we recorded a session <laughs> where i was the counselor and she was the um you know counselee and wow okay look at that lord so the last class that i took um was a mental health a mental health counseling course it was like a crisis intervention course right for mental health and you needed this to graduate i needed this to graduate was, this was the only class that i needed to graduate i didn't did everything else i just needed this one i was a super senior do you hear me in college i had more credits than you could i had more credits <laughs> because i was trying to figure it out this is why you need god because i was trying to figure it out by myself i didn't know what i was doing however God knew. As Prophetess Tiffany, Prophetess Tiffany says, the Holy Spirit will have you on a leash. You can only go but so far. So this was the one class I needed to graduate, okay, to have a bachelor's in counseling. This was the one class that, of course, had clinical hours. That's what, oh, excuse me. I'm blowing, wiping my nose. That's, you know, counseling is all about, like, when you go for teaching, you have to do clinical hours. And this was the one class. And I reached out to a bunch of places. I had no car in college. I reached out to a bunch of places in West Virginia. No one was accepting me to come do these clinical hours. I ended up going home for the summer, okay, to save money and just to not be there no more. I was over, I was there like five years. I was over it. <laughs> I just wanted to get out and graduate and be done. And so I tried to use this summer job that I had as sort of like to um, supplement the because even when I went back to New York, this is how the devil just works, try to just block and stop. And when you have no idea about spiritual warfare, you have no idea about him and doing these things, right? Even then, even when I went home, could not I reached out to a bunch of places, they were just not accepting me to like literally sit there and shadow to be. That's all I needed to do was sit there, shadow. Obviously, they would have to sign off and I would get you know credit for the hours. No one, none of the places I called. And I had no idea, like, even about the mental health field where I was. And then I got exposed to the world. Now I know all the places, okay? Um, not all the places, but that's a metaphor. Figure of speech. <clears throat> so I pretty much um, took an I. What did that? Oh, which was an incomplete. And then they extended it to, like, give me more time. And I still couldn't do it, Okay. So I ended up failing the class. I had to take an F. And like I said, that was the one, the mental health class was the one class that I needed to have an official bachelor's degree in counseling. 
So what we did was a workaround. I reached out. They was like, well, you have enough credits to graduate. I was like, yeah, you think? Um, so I could take just a general degree with no major. And I was like, all right, well, whatever we got to do so I can get up on out of here and get this degree. Because like I said, I have been there like more time than I needed to. Like I was actually like one of those students that took more classes than you needed a semester. And I was a full time uh, athlete. So I was taking like 15 to 18 credits per semester. I went to summer school. Like I was trying to get out. Like I had already started a semester behind was going to college for the year I graduated. Um, a semester, shoot, might be in a year. I actually delayed myself because I felt like I wasn't ready to start college. So when, by the time I did, um, it was after the fact of, you know what I'm saying? Like my year to graduate. Anywho, so I did, I took that. I took the Regents Bachelor's of Arts and got my degree. So I do have a actual bachelor's degree, but it's, it's a no major associated with it. Tell me why the first official job that I got (laughs) after this whole debacle and after getting my degree was at a special needs preschool. Do y'all see that? Do you see how the enemy tried to stop me from getting a degree in counseling with that last mental health class to my first official job out of college being in a special needs preschool? which I stayed at for four years. (laughs) And the only reason I left was because of the pay. Like I wasn't making enough to live, um, to sustain. Like you didn't, I was making under $10 as an adult, but I just, I love the field. Like it was, it wasn't about the money, but I needed the money to actually live. And so it just wasn't, it wasn't it, um, for me. And I was like, okay, well, I still want to be in education and work with kids. And like, that was still my whole thing. But now I got exposed to this whole mental health side, right? I am like made for it. Like I was like, oh, this is, I just got the kids. Like even the ones that would have behavior issues, I just knew how to like handle them and could see things that people couldn't see, um, which has always been like that in my life, right? (laughs) God, you're funny. So I just knew how to like, what would work with a certain kid or what wouldn't work with a certain kid. Was it perfect? Was I always on it? Absolutely not. Cause we're all full short, number one, but I had this like grace on my life to work with these kids and to see the the patients and just, it was just there, which I didn't discover until I took this job. Mm, Okay. Um, so yeah. So I was just thinking about that. Like, I was like, wow, he tried to stop me from graduating with that last class, number one. But like I said before, I didn't have any sort of relationship with God. Um, He did put people in my path. Um, I had this roommate in college in um, the dorm that I first stayed in was called Tau, no, Buskirk. And um, she was a Christian. (laughs) <laughs> and go figure her her fiance was also a Christian and he was one of the trainers one of the athletic trainers um but you know me being me no well, I shouldn't be say me being me because that was not me but all the stuff that was embedded the rebellion the witchcrafts um man you know like that definitely blocked and hindered a lot um And like I said, I didn't have relationship as far as like, okay, I sit with the Lord, talk with him, waiting to hear what he said. Like, I didn't have any of that then. And the enemy knew that. And so he tried his hardest to stop me from even entering into the mental health field. Mind you, I had no desire of mental health until I took that class. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and then I experienced some mental health stuff with, with a family member, you know, in my family. So it was like, it wasn't until I got introduced to that class and I was like, whoa, why didn't I see this side of like helping people before? It was just the general, like, um, you know, the typical helping people. Even when I did clinical hours for this other class, it was at a priest, it was at a daycare. Do y'all see that? Are y'all catching the connection? Are y'all catching it? It was, I took clinical hours for another class at a daycare (laughs) that the college had. The college had a daycare, like child center. And so the Lord was speaking in that. Like, like I said, the first job that I took as an adult after college, I remember 2020, 10 November, 
was in a special needs preschool. I'm not going to tell y'all the name of the preschool, okay, to preserve the preschool. But anybody who knows me um, knows where I worked. And, um, yeah. <laughs> and so, once again, um, where was I going? Because I said this correlated when I got this, like, in the bathroom about, oh, the church and church hurt. Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so... We had a class in this mentorship, and I mentioned this before, the core group is a mentorship that I'm a part of. And I was going, I guess where I was going, I was going down the path of like different things that the Lord had put me into, right? Or places that he had set me because of what he wants me to get out of it. And so this has been a whole healing series, right? That um, she's been teaching on and introducing reintroduce it you know um just deeper levels of just like inner healing of the soul like fragmented pieces that you didn't even think were still there and so as i was in once again in the bathroom oil and mezcal (laughs) thinking about how the enemy tried to stop me from even being in the mental health field and how i um worked in the mental health field for a very long time after that took a break uh Nope, I didn't really take a break because I thought I took a break and then I ended up taking on an individual case. (laughs) It was like no escaping. Do you hear me? It was no escaping. This sort of like, you know, this world, Um, which comes along with healing. I think that's where we're going, which comes along with healing and just healing of the mind and the heart. And so church hurt. <clears throat> and she was just explaining the different types of, <clears throat> excuse me, church hurt and like what it looks like. Cause I guess I didn't realize how much I was like, wow. Yeah, that is, yeah, that was a lot. Yeah. Like the stuff she seen, I was like, dang, I didn't see all that. But I did experience some of the things that she was talking about, about like, and I was talking to my mom about this before when we had a conversation about things that I just thought wasn't right. Like, And this is what, once again, with me not like having a relationship, just on a human level. Like, if you're portraying yourself, y'all shouldn't be arguing like this in a board meeting. This is why I never like really liked the whole like behind the scenes of church. Here we go. And I can see why it turns people off because I'm like, what are y'all doing? Like, this ain't right. And so there was a particular scenario that I will never forget because this was like a turning point in my, or like, um, I don't know if I say a turning point, but this was one of the things that stuck with me once again, because I'm tying it into mental health and once again, church hurt that stuck with me. And I was like, whoa, we got it all. What are we doing? Number one. Okay. What are we doing? (laughs) There is some kind of disconnect that we ain't connecting the dots. We missing it. And what are we doing? Um, And so this particular individual who is a family member of mine came into the church, not in his right mind, like anyone with regular eye, you may have to have spiritual eyes to see that he is not in his right mind at this point. Okay. Um, I felt like the average regular, you know what I'm saying? Like person that's like of average intelligence (laughs) could see that he was on under some influence. Okay. Excuse me whether alcohol or drugs, he was under some influence where he was not in his natural, okay, sober, right mind. And he came into the church building, okay, during service. So yes, it disrupted the service, but instead of, because that's where you're supposed to go to the church for healing and help, instead of them helping him and assisting him, and this goes with being equipped and having a relationship with Christ. Because you could tell, I can tell now that they had no idea what they were doing and they didn't know how to help him. They kicked him out. Okay. They, it's, it was, it's just, it was not handled how it should have been handled. And I'm just sitting there like, 
I'm just sitting there like, no, 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 like, no, 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 no. And whether I knew, whether he was a family member or I knew him or not, it, if he was just a, a human being that I had no idea off the street that came in and it was the same, I would have still felt the same way. It's not because I knew who he, you know what I'm saying? And I knew some of the issues had, had nothing to do with that. It was how he needed help. And he was like how she um, mentioned bleeding out, I mean, all over. And he needed help. And he came to the place that he is supposed to get help and healing and it wasn't there. So something was off. Something, something wasn't, you know what I'm saying? Like the math ain't math and what are y'all doing? Because this is what you're supposed to be proclaiming to be doing, right? You're supposed to be the kingdom of God. You're supposed to heal the sick. You know what I'm saying? Like they're supposed to, this, this, this is for the people that need healing. This is not for the people. You know what I'm saying? Like this is supposed to, what did they say? What's that saying? Um, church is like a hospital. Um, and so the sick people come to get healed and to get well. And instead of helping him, they kicked him out. And so it's like, wow. We need to be better equipped, number one, but we also need to be healed so we can help others, right? This is why the inner healing is so important and to uproot these roots in these deep-seated things that we might not have addressed or tackled or swept under the rug, as she had mentioned about healing. Sometimes we sweep these things under the rug and think that that is the solution when it's not, when we need to actually address them um, so we can process and then be healed. And then this is, I was thinking also, like, this is why that scripture, like, the Lord knows, right? He knows us and he knows the human nature. And he knows how we process. He walked this earth in human form. He's then went through everything. He went through the emotions. He went through the feeling. This is why the word has it in that order. Love God. <laughs> love your neighbor as yourself. So in order to love your neighbor, you have to love yourself. In order to love yourself, you have to love God. <laughs> Do you see that? And so a lot of people are helping or trying to, right? Good intentions and or not equipped to help because they're out of you know what i'm saying is misaligned they're out of order um in the order that god himself ordained for us to be functioning in and to be structured in does that make sense i hope it does because i felt like i said a lot um and maybe you should just sit there and unpack that because i was getting stirred boy Woo! i was like yes <laughs> Because you can't, I mean, you can, you can very try. You can very try. <laughs> you can try really hard to pour from, it is, it's like almost impossible to pour from an empty cup. Okay. Like, what are you squeezing out air? Like, you're just going to deplete yourself. And this is what the enemy wants because he knows the word also. Don't be fooled now. He knows. It says, don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. He knows the word. So his job is to weary you out to the point where you're so exhausted, you're so burnt out that you can't do anything. So you cannot, <clears throat> but when you have that willing nature and that willing heart, your desire is to help people. But I got to love God first <laughs> so he can fill me up. So I have the capacity to pour out from overflow and not from a negative you know what I'm saying? Not from depletion, because then you're just going to, like she said, bleed all out of on other people. And then that's just going to perpetuate a cycle of hurt. And so it is imperative that we, we, we are healed and that we know how to handle people in like all capacities that, you know, I want to say that we're called to or assigned to because you're not, obviously you you might not encounter every situ you know what I'm saying like every single type of situation of person, but be prepared in and out of season. You know what I'm saying. And that has been my whole thing even in the natural, which is why I wanted to work with all age ranges. I wanted to be equipped fully. Okay, I wanted to have a fully equipping. So I've I've worked with babies till a 92 year old woman. I have worked typical 
non-typical. Adults, children. I have worked with all ages, all types of people. I've had supervisors that were younger than me. Didn't bother me one bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know some people can't even handle that. Why am I going to this? (laughs) I guess because you get to realize what things are rooted in. Um, Once you get to peel back the layer, once you get to peel back that that veil and you get the stuff gets to expose the stuff gets exposed wow come on tongue get it together you get to see what things are rooted in um i've never had that issue with subordinates being younger than me or like super older than me like but yeah um hmm hmm that might be for somebody. <laughs> um, that doesn't determine um, how you do your job. And it shouldn't determine how you do your job at all. It shouldn't determine what your assignment is because we're supposed to do everything as unto the Lord anyway. <clears throat> so if we have that heart posture and that mindset, then we're working as unto the Lord. And so that takes out of, okay, this person's gender, this person's. That can take that take that all all that it should take it away, <laughs> which you know it might not be an overnight thing. That's another thing too. Like not everything is like instant, and the Lord knows we we working on that because I know He can do it. <laughs> and this is my issue, okay? Let me just be transparent and vulnerable, vulnerable with y'all because I know, okay, that God can do it. Um, I always expect him to just do it like, okay. (laughs) Number one, you operate outside of time. So like, why is it taking this long? (laughs) That's me personally, but I just think that's a lot of human nature. And, um, that comes with waiting. You know what I'm saying? And holds along for promises that number one, you, you said like, Lord, this is you, this you, you, you done gave me this. I wasn't thinking about this. You done said that this is supposed to happen. So what up? <laughs> but within that waiting, cause one of the fruits of the spirit, I was also talking about my mom, my mom about this is long suffering. Okay. And, um, in order to cultivate the stuff in us, of course, he can do it instantly. But in order for it to be cultivated and sustaining, just like when you farm and you plant, it takes time. When you put seed in the soil, it don't spring up immediately. Even things that grow quicker, it still takes time. And so although, thank you, Lord, although he can operate outside of time because he's God, he can move in and out whenever he chooses to for our benefit and for what he wants to fortify and strengthen us in sometimes it takes some things take a little bit longer because of what he's doing and working in us i received that lord you know he he puts me back into the spirit because you know when we begin in the flesh (laughs) he has to reel me back in and then i see things from a heavenly perspective this is why we have to put on the mind of christ um and it's a process you know i'll be processing too like all the time (laughs) i'll be processing the processes yeah okay um so yeah wow we're in season three i done had i done talked a lot y'all this is why i just be talking (laughs) I'm glad he gave me this title <laughs> of this podcast. Um, Cause I've gave, given this testimony in um, other seasons, other episodes, other seasons, it's only three and another season and another episode about um, how in childhood, cause a lot of trauma does start in childhood. Um, I kind of got shut up and um, I got in trouble for being like talkative, most talkative. And, um, <clears throat> like I took that to heart and didn't realize it. And so I just became a very quiet person. I became an observer. Um, and so I would just not say anything, <laughs> I, but I would be having stuff to say, <laughs> but there is also that balance and maturity 
of knowing when to say, right? There's a time and place for everything. So there is a time when you, you don't need to say anything, right? Because what comes out of the mouth defiles the man. So there is a time and point where you don't, you know, just be quiet because, mm-hmm. and then there is a times when you speak up, when you need to speak and, you know, release what the Lord has you to release and, you know, go forth in that. And so that comes with maturity and relationship and yielding once again it's always about yielding to the spirit and being led by him so you know what to do what to say when and not going ahead of him and his timing it's a lesson well learned and i'm still learning okay um about going ahead of the lord but that's for another podcast episode so thank y'all for tuning in and listening we are in season three this is season three episode one of the i just be talking podcast Mm destiny. Mm.